All right, you can see the 69 Mustang Mach 1, 128 Cobra Jet, our model car from Alaska. It's now mounted up in the roller hoop. Curtis here got it up there the other day. And we're starting to tear into it. We've got it all tore down. We have not flipped the car over yet. We'll do that right now. You can see what we're doing. First off is the battery apron. Quite obviously is a disaster. It's been patched up and repaired before. And even though we've got a complete panel, which Curtis shows there, we're only going to take that much of it out of there. Because this is a, a rare R code model, we're going to keep as much of the original as possible. The reason is the aftermarket isn't stamped quite as precisely in, in uh, certain areas as the original, and so, being such a rare, or valuable car. And none of this is bad. This is all good, factory spot welded, and whenever you replace that, you can tell for sure that's been done, and then you'll lose the factory spot welds up here. So with, with our ability to be able to butt fit pieces of metal and then weld them and dress them down to be a perfect fit, maybe a little skip coat of filler, I'd much rather have that scenario than an aftermarket panel that is obviously, you can tell, has been replaced. Because then at that point in time, you don't know whether the car has been collision damaged or really, really rusty. Keep the best original sheet metal that you possibly can for it, right? And that can only be done if you've got the talent, the skill, and the desire and determination to do the proper metal work. So, anyway, go ahead and set that down, Curtis. And uh, even though we got it up in the hoops yesterday, we just spun it back and forth a little bit. We have not turned it all the way over. So we're just going to show you what happens when you turn a car all the way over. You get all your nickels and dimes and pennies back or dirt, rust, and the grind. Do the brakes, let it run it over. There's a big chunk of something in there. Let's get that out. There's a big chunk of something in there. There it is. Okay. Well, those are just the hinge plates that will come out if you don't get them out. Sometimes you uh, forget to get them out. All right, the bottom side of the car appears to be pretty decent from the, from the bottom side. But obviously, the torque boxes have been beat up and jacked up. They jacked the car up on the torque boxes instead of right here, and it collapse that in. With a big 428 motor in there, the car's real heavy. Somebody's been using a small little bottle jack. So we'll have to cut that all out and replace that. These frame rails are pretty good shape. The floor pan is bad. And the rear torque box areas here, you can see are totally uh, been welded up with subframe connectors. Somebody cut them off. The rocker panels are cut off. The wheel houses, everything's been just cut for drag racing slicks and things like that. Rear frame rails are pretty good shape. Don't look like they've ever been uh, damaged, other than somebody welded some brackets on here for some type of auxiliary shock absorbers. Now right here is a factory 428 four-speed shock mount, so they have staggered shocks. So this is specific to an R model, same with this bracket right here. But these are somebody else's version. We'll cut those out, trim that up properly. Good luck. Torque boxes are all collapsed as well. We'll have to, we'll have to straighten those out, probably cut them out, and replace them. They do make replacement panels for those. Now, the quarter panel has been crashed into before and it's rusty, so we're going to quite obviously have to replace that with a, with a aftermarket quarter panel. We'll probably have to buy a complete upper, a complete quarter panel, which is actually very good for the Dynacorn. And Put a seam right here instead of replacing all this and getting into the factory lead work. You just don't want to do that. So, uh, the floor pan, even though it's okay inside, you see how rusty it is, or on the outside, very rusty on the inside. So, we'll probably end up cutting it out, 
and replacing it with a complete one-piece floor pan, not from an aftermarket company, but from another donor car from California we got spotted. That way we've got the complete original 69 floor pan. You see the Swiss cheese there, it's pretty thin. And even the uh, kick panel area there on that, that left side is thin from uh, having a mouse nest in there. But the upper structure, the roof, the posts, the, the frame rails themselves are really good on this car. It's never been in a major crash or collision. So, okay, that's a quick first glance look at this car. shock towers again somebody heated those up and beat them with a hammer to make header clearance for whatever they had in there at one point in time so a lot of work to be done so once we get this apron piece tacked in there and we'll uh, eventually get the floor pan cut out and everything else cut open and send it out to get media blasted we're gonna get back do the rest of the sheet metal work. And there's actually a big dent rock panel that's just covered in Bondo and we'll get that taken care of it. So for now, we just want to document the actual true condition of the car after we strip it down. And there you go. Not bad, just typical of a 45 year old car that's been around a while being used and abused. Now it's time for us to. Store back to the community.